I don't have video, but the lever in my Michigan tractor is so worn, I have to lean the seat far to the left to rotate the blower chute. Welcome to episode 12 of the 755 Followed Me Home project. In episode 11, part 3, a slipped sleeve in the Overbot 755 sidelined the original engine block and a replacement will be ready in two to three weeks. The block for the Overbot 855 is still not ready, but the 755 radiator is. New parts are in, so this is the perfect time to update remote hydraulic and transmission linkage, repair hood, and paint. Let's begin by sorting out the remote hydraulic linkage, see what's being replaced, and what's being saved. The main handle, lever, and cross bolt show the most wear, followed by these other two levers, a right and left, and pins. The pivot support has two galvanized bushings that thankfully are sacrificial. They are expensive for what they are, but are available. This is not so for the double ball joint, so this one will just have to do. The turnbuckle is now subbed by two metal straps, part numbers AM96583. New pins will correct center pin wear and indicate there is negligible wear in the turnbuckle yokes, so the turnbuckle will not be replaced. The slight rounding of the hole in the valve will be ignored. Note that both axes on this control had passed what I'd define as medium wear. Depending on how remotes were used, you could have major wear on one side and little on the other. Say the loader was mainly used for pushing and backfilling rather than tipping and dumping. Or running a snow blade, you would have an angle set and most of the time you would just be raising or lowering the blade. Depending upon the application, some parts of the system may have more wear than others. Coffee's ready, so it's time to clear off the kitchen counter and get the 755 ready for an engine. If your lever isn't worn as much as mine, it may be possible to tighten it up a bit. Well, this is the biggest offender of all. The main lever and this second piece, which is called a lever, which has a pin that goes inside here filled with a snap ring and it gets a lot of a lot of use. Well the first thing you can try to tighten up this bolt is to remove the cotter key and see if you can tighten this castellated nut. This is only a temporary fix as it checks lateral movement by binding the washers and support but can't make up for worn bushings. That made a lot of difference. And that special bolt through there is $125 some dollar. Back it off a little bit, compare the difference. So what we're going to do though is go ahead and take all of these pieces off. We'll see which parts need replacement. Okay, I'm going to do my best to show you how to take this apart. I have a 10 millimeter with a short extension that will fit underneath this seat bracket over that nut. It's a lock nut. But the first thing we have to do is take out this cotter key. Or just as well take it loose now. Oh, I think it broke off. No, it didn't. If you don't mind me fumbling around here. This is an 18 millimeter, by the way. If I can grab a hold of that cutter key. Got that out. Now we put our socket over that nut and we'll turn it out. 
Now you don't need to worry too much about this because the socket will hold that nut and that's the way you get it out and back in. Now there's a washer down behind here so we have to be careful of that and it has slipped loose fingers underneath to catch it that special $18 bolt is out caught the washer take the socket and the lock nut let gravity be your friend to keep it in there until you squirt it around and get it out. So now we've got that part of it done. Now we're still connected with the link at the bottom, but now we have the big lever out of the way. And while I'm at it, why don't we take this bolt out so you can kind of see what it's up against and then we can get back down in there that's a 19 millimeter I don't know if I told you that before There's a washer on the back. Now this is a, a special piece. Of course it wears here and so does the casting. And now we have access to these pieces. I'll move the camera. I'll see if I can show you what I did. That one that was further down in there, I used my magnet, pull the washer off. and then reached in behind and dropped the light. Let me fix that. I'll worry about putting them in later so I can use the magnet. Get that out of the way. Pull the pin. Hopefully, not drop it. Ah. So now these pieces can come out. And you see, we've got an egged out hole there. This one is supposed to be slotted. The lever support is held by four 5mm Allen head screws. There is no gasket or seals to worry about. Here's where the problem is. There's two bushings in this support. You can see there's a lot of sloppiness right there. Now you push it on in and it's not so bad. On the back side, if you take the good side of this bolt it goes right in and it's tight so we're not going to replace this $125 bolt we're going to replace the bushings the support has a slight internal bevel so it was difficult to get a good measurement of the support ID but it was really close to 3 quarter inch AutoZone had an SAE driver set in their rental department so I started with a 3 quarter driver that had a 620 or 5 8 inch center. The idea was to take advantage of the bevel and the support to break the bushing loose. Next I found a 13 millimeter socket having an OD of 725 or about 18 and a half millimeters. It did move a little bit. The bushing moved a little more and stopped. Out of solid options I found a flange bolt and nut with an OD of 680 and gave it a try. The ID of the bushing was 630 and since the first worn out bushing had broken loose and moved a little, 
the bolt was able to drive it and the second bushing out. Installation is a completely different story, as the bushings can simply be driven flush to the support. The balls in the end of this universal joint feel gritty. There's some dirt in here. So what I'm going to do is take a little bit of WD-40. Roll it around. Kind of just wash that grit out of there. And now because the assembly lube is sticky, I'm going to put some on it and work it around just to give us some permanent lubrication. The levers are installed on that universal joint with this bend toward the center. Now the next part of this is going to be touch and go as we go through it, but it's e a lot easier with this support out of the way to get access to these pieces, at least for reassembly. So I've already assembled this, let's call it a sub-assembly, and it's going to go in like this. So what I've done is rotated the valve so we can get the pin in that bottom hole using a needle nose plier. Then you can rotate that assembly up upper position. And then again, using the magnet, you can come in from the back. A lot of fiddling here. But there, we got it in. Yes, I know that bottom pin looks too long, but it is the, the part number. So again, we'll use our... If you, you might not have been able to see that. Turn it up and then install our cotter key. Again, using the needle nose pliers, gripping it, and getting her through the hole. Same for the upper pin, but you can probably just put that washer in there like that. Okay, now with a little bit of difficulty, we have all of the, the cotter keys and the washers and that link in are in place. Okay, the next step is to insert this lever into this lever. Not so fast. Make a suggestion that before you start assembling a new lever and bolts, do a test fit. I didn't record the event, but can tell you about it. The shiny lever wouldn't fit in the black lever without a bit of persuasion from the practical everybody needs one, two pound hammer. A ring of paint had formed around the inner tube but moved out of the way without too much difficulty. This bolt, when I tried to put it through, it wouldn't go. And this is not a place where you want to have trouble. So, what I've been doing is taking a Chainsaw file, and very carefully, just rounding both of these holes. I think when they pressed 
or punch those holes, the metal was deformed enough. I don't think you can see it, but it was deformed enough to cause a restriction or constriction of that of that hole. So we're having to dress it up a little bit. I had used the hammer and then the press to press that bolt through to see where the infer interference to see where the interference was. By using the file, I've been able to find where the high spots are and the even spots and the low spots. So you might have to do that. After some filing, I was able to get the bolt to go into the lever satisfactorily. But then the problem is with this washer hides the hole for the cotter key. And what I found was that the material they used is a different thickness. So my choices would be to press the wider, the thicker one, the new one together, which would misalign the holes, grind it, grind it off, making it thinner, or possibly just redrilling this hole larger. The decision I made was to install a thinner washer, or shim. John Deere couldn't find one, but Fastenal has a one half millimeter thick washer with a 14 millimeter hole that will work. Unfortunately, delivery was a week out and without any other options, I chose to use what I had on hand. The larger washer installs with a longer cotter key and will accomplish the same purpose. With these modifications out of the way, we can get back to assembling the linkage. I'm going to put a little bit more of our sticky assembly lube on there. And we'll coat the inside of this while good with it. And then just insert the snap ring. We go. And next we'll attach the turnbuckle with the pin. This adjustable link this is no longer available. And the cotter key. Next thing to do is to mount the support. Before you do that, I'm going to put a little bit more assembly lube down in there. We're hoping it will go between in that space between those bearings or bushings. And I'm just going to spread it around a little bit with the bolt. And put some more in there. There's no way to lubricate these later. So now we'll take our Allen wrench. I don't know if you've noticed but I have a spot on my thumbnail. It's split so I use some Gorilla Glue to hold it all back together. You can use what you want but I find it works pretty good in my situation. And we will torque them down till they squeak. Or in this case, just good and tight. Alright, the rest of this procedure is going to get pretty complicated and I'm going to be doing some fumbling. But the next thing is, I've put some assembly lube on this pin. And we're going to get it into the bottom valve. Let me run you through our dress rehearsal of what we're going to do. The first step is to put the pivot bolt into the support. It will then eventually have the castle nut and washer put on the back to hold it in. The next thing is this special bolt will go through the lever and through the hole in the pivot. 
it will be then coming out the back. We put the thin washer and the cotter key in it. And then this bolt, of course it will be still in here, it will go through that universal joint and a 10 millimeter socket holding the lock nut will come in from the back and thread it over there and tighten it up. So let's do it. It's going to be difficult to see but I'm going to drizzle some assembly lube on these pins let gravity do its job. I'd already put some in the pin I want to make sure that there's some more of this that's moving around. Now after doing this on your tractor, it would be nice to say once a year, just come in here, take some grease and pack it in there. Let me show you how I'm just going to do that. We don't really care how messy it is. We just want some extra grease in there. And we count on this running down. I've already put the assembly lube in the balls on the universal. I'll get a little bit more there. Now I've already put some but I'll I just put a little bit more assembly lube on the pivot. And we'll put the washer and castle nut on the back. Leaving that loose. Now, on the special bolt, now we'll take some grease because we want to have this special bolt lubed good inside the pivot. Now we bring the lever up okay let me show you another angle of that okay from this angle I'll pull the special bolt out a bit put the washer on it and as we rotate it up we align that little ball joint the, the grease will hold that washer back Now bring the lever back, insert the cotter key. Now I've put some sticky lube on the nut to hold it into the socket. Bring it in from behind. Ooh, I was lucky. Thread it in.
take the ratchet, connect it on the back, take our 18 millimeter here, That's tight. All I need to do is to spread the key. It happens to be in a good place right there. I'm not going to do it very much because I want to spread the any kind of wear surface over that bigger washer that I had to put in. So use a 19 millimeter to tighten that castle nut down. That's right there. Put the cutter key in. Well, there are all the parts in, lubricated, ready to go to work. Let's see how it looks. Wow. <laughs> it makes me smile. I didn't think of measuring this before I took it apart, but everybody's is going to be different. But now, got just an inch and three quarters, inch and five eighths, four and aft. And just a half, half inch. on the side to side. Well the total cost of these parts was $379.60 plus tax. The job will take about an hour but add another one for dropping things on the ground, reaming out the new lever and going for coffee. Note that the collection includes $3280 for a new knob and clip. I'm keeping the old assembly in case it's in better shape than the one on the snow blowing 955. If you reuse the knob and fastener, the cost for parts comes down to $346.80. Coming up in part two, I'm going to tighten up the transmission control linkage, paint over that green overspray paint, and I just received word that both the 755 and 855 overbought engine blocks are ready to be picked up. So things are going to really start getting busy around here. Stay tuned.